All right, so over the next two weeks, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about the moving forward, going forward from the chapel, Cuyahoga Falls, to, to Falls Community Chapel. So what are some of the things that we're going to focus on? How did we get to these places? And we're going we're gonna to go from there. So that's going to be the next couple of weeks. So normally, as you know, we, we are more of a... We go through books and, and those sorts of things, but these next two weeks are going to be very different. So let me pray for us, and then we'll, we'll get studying. God, we are grateful for you. We're grateful for your love, for your mercy. God, thank you for even the picture of you leading us by your spirit and through your word with the world yelling at us and telling us different things. What a great picture that is. And I tune our ears to you. May we hear what the Spirit has to say to the churches. Help us to love you more when we leave than we did when we walked in because we know you more. Amen. You know, it is really good to be back. Um, it's nice to be on vacation. It's nice to be in 80 degree weather. Sunny, 80-degree weather every day was amazing, um, but it is good to be home. It's good to be back with you and to worship together and to study God's Word together. So I'm going to go a, a brief overview of the church. We have spent a lot of time on this over the last few months, so we're not going to go into huge detail, but I want to spend a little bit of time on the church and then we're going to look at where we are going as an individual church. So the word church comes from the, the Greek word ekklesia. Ekklesia. You don't need to know that, but know that it means assembly. It's, it's a people that are called together for a common purpose. They're together for a common purpose. And it's, it's never used for a synagogue. It's never used. It's always in the New Testament used for the church. It is a, a people that are gathered together, an assembly of people for a common purpose. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Isn't that a beautiful promise? I will build my church. Now this doesn't mean when he says the gates of hell will not prevail that every single local church that's ever existed will exist forever. I mean, obviously, that's not the case because churches close all the time. So, so what is he talking about? He's talking about his universal church that he builds, his people that he gathers together. And so while he builds his church, this does not mean that we don't have a job to do. Right? We, we can't sit by and say, well, he builds his church, so we're just going to sit here and let him do whatever he does and hope that it goes well. We have a job. The New Testament is full of passages on how God has equipped all the saints in the church and in the local church to, to do his work. We all have different roles. We all have different jobs to do. And as we work together, we are a body, the body of Christ, that works together in unison for his good and for his glory. We did a series in the fall about the purpose of the church and the role of elders. And so again, not much detail here. But remember Paul in Ephesians 4. He has given the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. Why? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. But our job, when, when you think of the, the job of the pastors, the, the elders, our job is to equip you for the work of the ministry so that you can do the work of the ministry. The, the job of the church falls on all of us, not just one of us, not just those who are paid, but on all of us. It's the elder's job, which means we are constantly looking, constantly evaluating what we are doing and how we are doing it. The better equipped we are, the greater the community will be blessed by the gospel. The better equipped all of us in this room are, the better the blessing, the greater the blessing we will be on the people of the city of Cuyahoga Falls. 
In Acts 2, 42 through 47, Luke wrote, and they devoted themselves, the, the church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. So you have study of God's word, worship, the breaking of bread and the prayers, being together, having meals together, communion, taking communion together. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were taking care of each other. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any, has, has, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. They had individual gatherings in their homes, but they also had collective gatherings where they worshiped together. This isn't the, the church isn't a one day a week we get together and it's, it's a life which we'll get into in a minute. It's a life together. Our, our job, like this, why is this part in Acts relevant? Because this is what the church looks like. We gather together. We worship. We, we do evangelism together. We, we share the gospel with the world. We do this together. And our job was given to all believers by Jesus. And it's what Emily read, the, the Great Commission. And I won't sing it to you either. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. It's, it's go and make disciples, baptizing, and, and don't, don't neglect what he says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. In the world that we live in that is so opposed to the word of God, our job is to teach the world the word of God, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. This doesn't mean we stand on the street corner and yell at people when they sin. The world is going to sin. We are going to sin. Our job is to teach them the reasons why, how, and know that Jesus is with us when we do this. The biblical church, as we've seen, has three main areas of focus. It seeks to glorify God in worshiping him. We worship God as he has revealed himself in the Bible. We look at this and say, who is God? How has he revealed himself to us? And how are we to worship him? This is our guide. This is our standard. This is our foundation. We do not stray from this. Because if we do, then we start to worship idols rather than God. In this way, we are very different than any other human organization that has ever been created. We don't we don't do things based on whims. We don't do things based on how we feel or what we want. We do things based on the word of God. He is our priority. The church seeks to glorify God by building up each other. This is, this is one of the reasons why it's so important to gather here together on Sundays, but also so much more than that. This is why small groups are so important. This is, this is why we live in a community around each other so that we can share each other's burdens. This is what Dietrich Bonhoeffer called life together. We share one another's burdens. We walk with one another. The church seeks to glorify God through evangelism. It's, we are, we are God-focused, inward-focused, and outward-focused. It's all three of those things. We, we gather together. The, the purpose of a Sunday morning gathering is to build up the church, also knowing that there will be unbelievers in here with us. But our focus here is to build up the church, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and going out and doing his work. So what does that look like for us moving forward? 
Well, as was said, in, in November, a number of us met with a consultant. So we, we actually hired a consultant, and, th- and this is part of the, the transition from going from a, a campus of the chapel to Falls Community Chapel Independent. We, we wanted to hear from who we are. We wanted to hear from you to see those things about our church that are identity markers, those, those things that, that this is who we are, but this is also how we can improve. These are things that, that we value together. And these are things that we need to do better. And so with the consultant, we have developed three main priorities that we'll focus on for the next three years. So not all these things will happen at once. We can't implement everything at once. It's going to be a process of implementation. And and some of them we're already doing. But it's it's, let's hone them. Let's get a little bit better. Let's, Let's stay focused. Some of these things are in internal and some are external. Some you will directly see and be a direct part of, and some you will hopefully just see the results. And we'll get into some of those details. But remember, these came out of the discussion and brainstorming with you. Right? This is us sitting together saying, all right, what, what, are, what are our identity markers as a church? And so as we move forward to an independent church, we are losing the support that we've had over the last five years. But we will also now have our own identity moving forward, our own focus, our own direction. So one of the reasons why the the seven chapel campuses are all going independent is because we want to be able to focus in our community. And so we've had this thing where we're, we're seven different churches in seven very different communities. Akron, Green, Wadsworth, Kenmore, Nordonia, Cuyahoga Falls, and Medina. All are very different communities. And so they they cause us to want to focus in our community. Our focus is Cuyahoga Falls, and yet as part of the chapel, we have also had to focus on being a part of the chapel. And so we make decisions together that are beneficial to the organization, maybe the overall vision of the church, but not necessarily for our community or for Green or for Akron. And so this allows us and enables us to to focus more on our individual communities and the people in our congregation. So that's why we're doing this. But but it's a process, right? So we we now have to 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 refocus who we are and say, all right, well, how are we going to move forward as an entity? And so there are three main priorities and three different strategies under each priority. And so this week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at some, and next week I'm going to look at the rest. I'm, I'm not going to share all the details, and it's not because it's a secret, it's because we don't have time and it's boring. Like some of this stuff, if you want to know more details, come talk to me or talk to any of the guys on the elder board, elder oversight board, and we'll, we'll be happy to, to share. But the first is, our priority one is to go and serve. We will go into the community to serve and give others the opportunities to know Jesus. And, and this sounds very basic, and some of these are basic, but we, we put them in writing to say, all right, let's, let's remember that these are the focus that we want to be focused on. Because much like we just saw with Jenna and Ellie, we as a church are following God's word and there's all these different people screaming and yelling and, and grabbing our attention. And so we, we have these things in writing to say, here's where we're going. Let's make sure that we're following this path that we have laid out before us. We want to be known as a place that cares, as a place that serves and transforms people through the gospel. Not because of our own strength, not because of what we do, but because of who God is. So there are three main ways that we will do this, three, three strategies that we will use. The first is, is leveraging high-impact needs of the community. These are, these are direct, tangible ways. These are, these are l- almost the low-hanging fruit. Think of the food drive. The food drive. This is, this is a way. Our, our end goal is not to give people cereal boxes. Yes, it's important. Food is important. They need it. Our end goal is to provide 
food in the name of Jesus so that they know that we are a place who loves them and wants to take care of them and hopefully will build relationships in which we can then serve them in other ways and they get to know Jesus through our actions. The second way is we will join public events in the community. This is something that we did a little bit better pre-COVID. COVID messed everything up. I don't know if you're aware of that. It messed everything up. Um, and so it's a time to, to refocus. This will involve joining two community events a year and, and making our presence known. And, and we'll do this at, in the community and we will do this at, at CVCA. One of the reasons that we'll do it at CVCA is to, is to thank them, to almost repay them, although I don't like that, that term, but to give back to them as they have extended to us. They have been so, so gracious to us. And we want to, to and you may not know this, but every kid who goes to CVCA is not a follower of Jesus. And so what are ways that we can serve them as well? The last strategy here is to reach the next generation. And, and again, some of these seem very basic. Yeah, that should be the job of every church, to reach the next generation. But, but there are ways that we, we want to build a vibrant community that impacts children and their families. And so parent outreach, we want to walk beside parents, which... I mean, I'm one of those who needs to be walked beside, but walk beside parents to, to help them, and grandparents, parents and grandparents, by the way, to help them raise and disciple their children and grandchildren. We will provide resources, and this is classes, this is books, conversations for parents and children to help them grow in their faith. We've, we've talked about it. In the back, we're going to have a resource table, and the resource table, I'm, I'm actually in the process of collecting books for that, um, but books for, for you to, to read, take one, read it, bring it back, give it away, whatever you do with it, but, but share. And, and the goal of that is to get books that help us grow in our faith, to help us to take the time that we have to read and to understand God and our faith a little bit better. We will continue to do things like Kids Club to help kids learn some of the basic foundational things of our faith at their level and to help them get to know each other, to have a time where the kids can really just be together and focus on each other and also understand and learn some of the basic foundations of our faith. After Easter, hear this, after Easter, we're, we're changing uh, our kids' room a little bit, and so the older kids in the kids' room, so still those, oh, they're going to stay in that room. All right, they're going to be in that room, but we're going to have a, a, a spot that is specifically designed for preschoolers so that they can learn theology on their level. And they can, they're going to do crafts, and they're going to have a good time, and they're going to do those things, but really take those opportunities that we have with them to say, let's, let's focus our, our time that we have with you kids to help you learn, to help you grow, to, to build some of those very foundational purposes of our faith. Priority number two is strengthen and clarify. This is a lot of the stuff that's going to be internal. So we're, we're going to... Invest in key areas that increase the clarity of our mission. And that's our, our um, ministry leaders. We gather once a month to go over how is the ministry going? What are we doing? What can we do better? How can we improve? So clarify that. Things like develop roles for the elders, especially as we're, we're going through this transition of having, uh, being a campus that is, that is led by a, a trustee board that is in a different city, in a different place, to having one that is an elder oversight board. We're going to get the church website up, which it is up, but keep it effective. Have, make sure that that is a priority and way that we communicate to the world and to you on things that are going on. 
We'll develop a healthy church infrastructure so that there's clarity for you on who to talk to about issues, concerns, needs. Make sure that you understand who is doing what so that if there are concerns or if you have a desire to volunteer in certain areas, you can say, here's the person I need to talk to. And we'll finalize our, our local and global missions funding. Again, this has been decided by the chapel up to now. Like we haven't had a say in the areas in which we would focus our, our missions. And so we're going to continue to support the three India pastors that we support. And this is going to come directly out of our budget. So this is not something that you, again, like you've had to do in the past where you write either a check or you give online and then you send an email or you write a handwritten note and you connect it to a pigeon and the pigeon flies away and you give it to somebody else. And no, this, this will go directly out of our budget. So this is not something that, that we take special offerings for, but this is what we're, what we're going to do. We also have three uh, families of international ministries who we will support. And two of those families, I can't say right now because I'm online and we can't talk about it online because they are in dangerous areas of the world where if their names get out and somehow somebody finds out, which would seem very weird coming from a very small church like us, but it happens. And so if, if it was found out what they were doing in those countries, they would either be physically persecuted or at best they would be kicked out. And so we want to be a help and not a hindrance to what they're doing. And so more information on that in different times in different areas. And um, the other family that we're supporting is Nate and Danielle Cheney, who you may remember they have been with us in the past. Um, they've been... Now, they're currently serving in Senegal, and they're moving more than likely to Albania for church planting. And so um, one of the cool things about all three of these is that they're people that we can actually go visit. And so we want to be a church who loves missions, who wants to, to see people go and fulfill the Great Commission here in Cuyahoga Falls, throughout our country, but also around the world. And so we get to, we'll get to go and partner with them in ways uh, that we serve. Our goal, we looked at people and four people who, who have a connection to our church, who have either been a part of our church or connected to it, and whose goal it is to, to bring the gospel to people, bring people to Jesus by bringing Jesus to them. We've decided on three local ministries to support. First is a Refuge Host Home, started by our very own Michael and Emily Oxley. And, and Refuge Host Homes, its mission is to serve vulnerable pregnant women and their children in the greater Akron area by providing a safe haven through housing, supportive relationships, and the power and love of Jesus Christ. It's, it's providing people open up their homes and have a, a vulnerable pregnant woman come and live with them and provide a house for them and care for them and do it in the name of Jesus. Again, the goal is not to provide safe housing. That is one of the things that we do at Refuge, but it's to provide housing to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to create relationships where the women are in a place in, are placed in homes of Christ followers so that the women can be introduced to Jesus by those who are loving and caring for them. The second one is Akron Pregnancy Services. Um, Akron Pregnancy Services was started in the early 80s by several pastors who, who began praying for the establishment of a pregnancy center that could offer accurate information, practical support, and the love of Christ to those in unplanned pregnancies. Akron Pregnancy Services has been providing pregnancy support to women who have no support while showing them the love of Jesus. The last local ministry is True Freedom Ministries. And they're dedicated to reaching Ohio's prisoners, homeless, and addicted with the truth of God's word and the true freedom that comes only through Jesus Christ. Sharing the gospel with men, women, and juvenile inmates of Ohio's prisons, 
to become committed followers of Jesus. They go into the prisons and hold Bible studies and help them see their need for Jesus. They host weekly centered, Christ centered addiction recovery programs also to equip those struggling with lifelong skills to break their addiction. And again, it's through the name of Jesus. It, it, there's, no, there's no hiding it. It is very front and center, Jesus focused. Here's some numbers from last year. This is 2022 for, um, for True Freedom Ministries. 20,102 total prisoners who attended services, classes, and programs. 20,000 inmates. 19,958 total clothing and toiletry items distributed. 18,720 hot meals served on the streets of Cleveland. And 16,000 volunteer hours given. These three ministries serve the most vulnerable people. Pregnant women are told by society that they can just kill their baby and move on. They don't need to worry about it. Just kill it and move on. But we believe that all human life is made in the image of God and life begins at conception. And so we want to support ministries like Refuge and like APS because they protect those made in the image of God whose society says you should just kill. As a former prosecutor, I have seen firsthand the recidivism rate among men and women who have been in prison. It is not uncommon. It's actually more uncommon for them to not go back to prison than it is for them to go just over and over again. They need help, they need support, and most of all, they need Jesus. You take an inmate, get them out of prison and say, now go find a job and see how that works. It doesn't. And that's one of the things that True Freedom Ministry understands. They understand these needs and are able to go into prisons, share with them, share Jesus with them while building relationships with them and job training services so that when they get out, they've already given their lives to Jesus and there's a support system for them in place. The last local ministry is Camp Carl. And we all voted on this in January, so it shouldn't be a surprise, but we have agreed to give 2% of our total budget to Camp Carl over the next three years. I have personal history at Camp Carl and so do many of you. It's a place where many unchurched kids go, they're sent there by their parents, some of whom will not allow their kids to go to church. They let them go to Camp Carl. And so it's a chance for us to be a place where the gospel is shared. Our commitment to you and to God, or to God and to you, is that we will give at least 10% of our budget to missions. At least 10% of our budget goes to missions. And the goal is to continue increasing that amount, as the Lord permits. The next thing we'll do is develop a communication systems plan. And this is not my gifting for sure. If you want systems, find somebody else. This is why the elder oversight board is so valuable, because we all have different gifts, and we all use them together for the kingdom. And so we have elder oversight board ministry leaders and volunteers who have been and will continue to help in this. But we hope to develop rhythms for the church calendar, make sure our announcements are clearly communicated. See, we have the monthly calendars in the back in the Razak Center. These, these are things that we, that we understand we need to do better. And lastly, we'll, we'll develop and implement a prayer plan for our church. And one of the things is the last Sunday evening of each month, we'll have a dinner and prayer and worship time together. We did this last month, and it was incredible. The dinner allows us to spend time with one another, getting to know one another, and hearing one another's stories. The prayer and worship time enables us to be a united voice before the throne of God. We go to God together. We'll continue to have corporate prayer on Sunday mornings. But our goal is not to pray once a month or once a week, but to build a culture of prayer, to train each other 
in praying and to pray more regularly. And I can assure you, I need more help than any of you. I struggle in this area, but the value of it, it doesn't matter what we plan on doing, what we work at accomplishing, or how hard we work. If we are not in prayer, it will not succeed, and our ministry will not be effective. Brothers and sisters, we have the honor and privilege of being a church of the Most High God. We are a called together assembly of the Most High God. And our goal as elders, as the church, is to bring the name of Jesus to those in Cuyahoga Falls and around the world. When we began as the chapel Cuyahoga Falls, the city of Cuyahoga Falls had 51% nuns, N-O-N-E-S, those who have no religious affiliation. That number, I'm certain, has increased. But at the time, it was twice the national average. Twice the national average. Our goal has been to see that number go to zero. 51 to none is our goal. As we seek to move forward as Falls Community Chapel, all that we do has the goal of bringing honor and glory to the name of Jesus and to bring him to the people of our city. Let us pray that he will use us in such a way. And let us pray that we will bring him glory.